Hi there and welcome to unit 4. In this unit we're going to deal with vectors. So you should have in front of you a note sheet. If at any time you think I'm talking too quickly and you need to catch up, just let the sub know and she can pause the movie. And if the movie is paused then you can discuss in your groups and make sure that everybody understands things. So that's perfectly fine. This lesson doesn't take a whole lot of time. So if you need to slow it down just go ahead and do that. I'm at jury duty today. God willing, I'll be back tomorrow and everything should be good. But for now, um, you're going to have to make the best of it and I'm sure that you guys can handle this. So let's get started. So you have your worksheet in front of you. You got your notes ready to go. We're dealing with unit four. Now vectors, of course, were things that we have learned about in previous unit. Those were things that needed both a direction and a magnitude. So among these we learned velocity, displacement, acceleration, and force. These are the four that we've learned so far. We're going to learn some more later, but for now what we can do is we're going to expand the ideas that we have dealt with before. Before we were dealing with things that were moving either just straight up and straight down or straight forward and straight back, and we could get away with plus and minus as our directions. So we had problems like Somebody's pulling me 100 newtons east and somebody else is pulling me 80 newtons west. The resultant here, clearly east is going to beat west by 20, so my answer would be 20 to the east. That would be the resultant if I'm just going in a straight line. But what if I'm not going in a straight line? What if we have different directions? What if we're going all over the place? In that case, we need a new orientation system. We can't get away with just plus and minus. What we are going to use here is called the bearing angle system. The bearing angle system describes the direction based on the points of a compass with north pointing at zero and then we go clockwise around the compass to get back to north at 360. That is what is used by everyone who flies, everyone who drives ships, everyone who wants to navigate around the world. That is not the same system that's used in math class. In math class they use a different system and there's reasons why they use their other system. But the rest of the world uses the bearing angle system so that's what I'm going to teach you. <clears throat> the bearing angle system uses a compass that looks just like this one. Now you have to understand that some people misunderstand compasses because we stick them on the wall and when you stick it on the wall north always looks like it's going up. Up is not north. North is toward the main office. The main office where the cow is, the cow is facing north. So we, the gym then would be on the south end of our building. Our hall that we're in, the E hall, is on the west side. And then the east side of the building would be like the D hall and the F hall. So north, south, east, west, these are all dealing on the horizontal plane. It's not talking about going up and down. South is not down, north is not up. They're different. Now, but if you look at the compass, I want you to memorize the four compass point numbers. They're really, really easy numbers to memorize. If you look at north, it's zero. East is clearly 90 degrees away from north, so east is pointing at 90. If we compare east and south, that's another 90 degrees, so 90 plus 90 is 180. I add another 90 to get to west, that's 270. I add 90 more to get back to north, that's 360. So if you can count by 90s, 90, 180, 270, 360, that's not too hard. That's where our four compass points are. So starting with our four compass points, what the bearing angle is doing is you're pretending you're right at the center of that circle. If I'm standing right at the center of that circle and say I'm pointing at 17 degrees, well if I'm pointing at 17 degrees that means I'm going mostly north and a little bit east. If I'm pointing at 188, I'm pulling mostly south and a little bit west. If I'm pointing at 250, I'm going mostly west and a little bit south. That's not too hard to figure out. If I'm going west, I would be headed straight at 270. If I'm going east, I'd be going straight at 90. But we're not always going directly on these compass points. Sometimes we're headed another way, and so we can describe it based on how far away we are. If I'm going 15 degrees east of south, I'm going at 165. How did that work? Well, if I'm going east of south, I'm comparing myself to south. South was 180. If I'm going on the east side of south, east is going toward the numbers that are smaller. So if I'm going smaller than 180, 15 degrees, then 180 minus 15 would give me 165. 
So let's use 10 degrees just because everybody can add and subtract with 10 really well. If I'm going straight east, that's at 90. But if I'm going 10 degrees north of east, where the numbers are smaller, I'd be going at 80. If I'm going 10 degrees bigger than east, I'd be going at 100. That would be south of east. If I'm going west, if I'm going 10 degrees north of west, the numbers are getting bigger, so that'd be 280. If I'm going 10 degrees south of west, then I'd start at 270 and go down to 260. So south of west, 10 degrees would be at 260. It's easy stuff. What would be my heading if I'm going 25 degrees north of west? If I'm north of west, I'm starting with west, 270. And if I'm north of that, the numbers are getting bigger. So if I'm 25 degrees bigger than 270, I'm going to be at 295. If I'm going 25 degrees south of west, now suddenly the numbers are getting smaller. So if I start at 270 and I go 25 smaller than 270, I'm going to be at 245. Easy, right? What if I'm going 25 degrees west of north? Well, north has two directions. It's both 0 and it's 360. If I'm looking at north from the east side, north looks like 0. If I'm looking at north from the west side, north looks like 360. So if I'm on west of north, I'm looking at north as it's a 360. So 360 minus 25 means I'm going to end up at 335. If anybody doesn't understand this, pause this now and make sure that everybody in your group can get you on task and make sure that you're understanding this because this is an important thing that's not going to go away. Okay, our first problem. If I'm walking 47 meters south and then I walk 62 meters west, what is my displacement? Well, to do this, it's great to draw little pictures. First, I'm going to draw an arrow that's pointing south and then I'm going to draw an arrow that's pointing west. Well, if I'm going south and then I'm going west, then my displacement is clearly going southwest. Now, the displacement here, we're going to call the resultant. So that's okay. If we're going southwest, then that's quite a few different degrees. South is pointing at 180. West is pointing at 270. So really, anything in between 180 and 270 is going southwest. So what we want to do is be more precise. We want to know exactly where between 180 and 270 am I pointing. So that's where our bearing angle comes in. Now this word resultant, the resultant is the vector that replaces the others. It's their equal. So you could walk south and then west. I could walk southwest and we would end up at the same spot. We could take your trip out and replace it with my trip and everything would be groovy. It would all work out the same. That's what a resultant is something that can replace two numbers with one number. It makes it a little simpler. So the resultant in this case, of course, is a vector term. And vector terms have two components, both a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is the size. How far do I have to walk in this case? How many meters will I have to walk at that angle? The direction then is going to say exactly what angle, somewhere between 180 and 270, am I going to have to walk? So this has two steps to the problems, a magnitude step and a direction step. It's not hard. We can handle this. So now we need to add our numbers. Well, clearly on the south side, I want to write 47. And on the west side, I want to write 62. So if you look at this, you say, hey, that looks a lot like a right triangle because it's a right triangle. So if it looks like a right triangle, we know two sides and we're looking for the hypotenuse. Anytime we have two sides and we're looking for the hypotenuse, of course, we want to use Pythagorean's theorem. That's the one you like the best, so this lesson's total cake. Here we're going to have 47 squared plus 62 squared is r squared. Go ahead and take a minute and plug that in. Of course, the answer there equals r squared, so you may have forgotten to square root it at the end. If you forgot to square root it, your calculator says 6053. If you remember to square root it, it'd be 77.8010827. Now, how many sig figs do we have? Well, 47 and 62 both had 2, so we want to round that off 
to 78 meters. So 78 meters is the magnitude part of my answer. Now I need to focus on the direction part. So how do we find this direction? Well, first we have to look at our triangle and say, which angle am I looking for? The angle that you're looking for will always be the starting point angle. I can tell which one is the starting point angle by looking at the arrows and tracing them backwards. If I stare at the arrows and I trace them all backwards, they all come to that top angle. So the angle I'm looking for here is the top angle. Now compared to that top angle, the 47 is the adjacent side. And compared to that top angle, the 62 is the opposite side. So what we want to do is calculate that internal angle, and then we want to make that a bearing angle by comparing it to one of our compass points. In this case, we're comparing it to south. So to find the direction, we're going to use tangent because we found out that we have adjacent and opposite. We know tangent is opposite over adjacent. Since I'm looking for my angle here, I don't have it. If I'm looking for the angle, I have to hit tangent to the minus 1, or second tangent. So on your calculator, you hit second tangent. Inside the parentheses, we do the math. Opposite on top, adjacent on the bottom. So 62 on top, 47 on the bottom. After we hit equals, we round that off again to the nearest whole number, which would be 53 degrees. Now 53 degrees is now the top angle in that triangle, but that's not my bearing angle. We said my bearing angle is going southwest, some number between 180 and 270. 53 is telling me how far away is the hypotenuse from 47. Well, 47 was pointing straight south. South is 180 degrees. Since I'm on the west side of south, the numbers are getting bigger, so I'm 53 degrees bigger than south, 53 degrees bigger than 180. So I'm going to say, hey, the 47 is pointing at 180, and I'm going 53 more. 53 plus 180 means that hypotenuse arrow is pointing at precisely 233 degrees. So that's going to be my direction. So my final answer, I'm going to have a magnitude of 78 meters at a heading of 233 degrees. So the 78 is the magnitude, the 233 is the direction, the two together is my complete answer. It tells me how far I need to walk and what direction I need to point. Again, if you're having any trouble with this, please pause right now, work in your groups, and make sure that everybody understands this. Hopefully everybody's ready now so we can go on to our second example. This one gets a little bit trickier, only a little bit. So a plane is flying at 24.5 meters per second straight north and has an east wind of 12.9 meters per second affecting it. What is the resultant velocity of the plane? So do not draw this yet. Let me draw it and then I'll tell you when to start drawing because there's going to be a change here. The plane is going north, and so we draw one arrow going north, but the wind, it's an east wind. East winds are actually pushing west. When we talk about wind, we don't say where the wind is pushing toward. We always say where the wind is coming from. So an east wind is actually coming from the east, which means it would be pushing me to the west. So the plane's engine is shoving me north, and the wind is shoving me west, and if I'm going north and west, I should be pointing northwest. But clearly, if I made this into a right triangle, this is technically correct. Both of these are acting concurrently on the plane. Concurrently means at the same time. So if the north and the west vectors are both acting concurrently on the plane, this is the correct drawing. But if I make that into a triangle, it is not pointing the right way. It's not pointing north and west. So what I want to do is line up my vectors head to tail. The head of the arrow is the little point. The tail of the arrow would be the other end. Right now, north and west are both tail to tail. That's not giving me the right direction. If I line them up head to tail, they will. So here's where I want you to actually start drawing. We want to draw it like they're two separate trips. They are happening at the same time, but mathematically I can draw them like they're separate. First I went north, when I got done going north, then I went west. Now if I start at my start and stop at my stop, 
then I'm going to be pointing northwest. So my resultant here is going to go the correct direction. Again, the resultant should always point the direction that the two words added up together tell you. Here I'm going west and north. I add those together. I get northwest. My arrow better be pointing northwest. Otherwise, I'm going to mess up on my direction. So the resultant, again, is going to start at the stop and end at the end and point in the right direction. So here we have velocity, just like we had displacement, just like we can use force. All of these are vector terms, so they're going to have both a magnitude and a direction in their answer. So we'll have the two components. So now we want to add the numbers. Well, north we were going 24.5 and west we were going 12.9. So if we add those in, again, how do we find the R? Well, again, I know two sides. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I'm going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So again, I have 12.9 squared plus 24.5 squared equals R squared. I'll give you a moment. Plug it in. If you got 766.66, that's r squared, not r. You forgot to square root at the end after square rooting. We get this number, and now we look at our original numbers. 12.9 and 24.5 both had three sig figs, so we want to round this off to 27.7 meters per second. Nice and simple. We can handle this. It's totally easy. That's the magnitude part. Now notice that my unit stayed the same. I had 24.5 meters per second added to 12.5 meters per second, so my answer is in meters per second. I'm never going to add meters per second to newtons. I'm never going to add meters to meters per second. They're always going to be the same unit. So everything on the triangle has to have the same unit. Easy. Moving on, we of course now need to find the direction. So again, the angle I'm looking for is going to be my starting point angle. And all I do is I trace my arrows backwards, and I say, where are these arrows coming from? Well, clearly, if I trace my arrows backwards, the angle I'm looking for is the bottom angle this time. So if I'm looking at this bottom angle, I say, hey, it looks like 12.9 is opposite, and 24.5 is adjacent to that bottom angle. So again, I'm going to use tangent, but since I'm looking for the angle, I'm going to hit second tangent, and inside that second tangent parentheses, I'm going to put the opposite side on top, which was 12.9. And I'm going to divide by the adjacent side, which was 24.5. After closing it, hitting equals, I round to the nearest whole degree. And that tells me that that inside angle at the bottom is 28 degrees. But again, I'm pointing northwest. So uh, that just tells me I'm 28 degrees, my hypotenuse is 28 degrees away from where 24.5 was pointing. Well, 24.5 was pointing straight north. North from the west side is 360 degrees. So I have now gotten 28 degrees smaller than 360. So I'm going to take 360 minus 28. That means my hypotenuse angle is pointing at 332. That means my final answer is going to be 27.7 meters per second at 332 degrees. The magnitude half is 27.7 meters per second. That's how fast I'm going. 332 tells me what direction I'm pointing as I'm going that speed. That's all there is to it. Really simple stuff. You guys are totally going to dominate on your homework. Your homework, of course, is problems A, so make sure that you get a unit four worksheet. Work together in small groups. Remember, you got to head to tail all your drawings. You draw one arrow where it stops. That's where you start drawing the next arrow. We don't have them tail to tail. We don't have them head to head. When we draw them head to tail, we get our direction correct. So if I'm going south and I'm adding it to east, then my resultant better be pointing southeast. Add the two words together. Remember that when we have our magnitudes, we're going to look at that and we're going to round that to correct sig figs based on what was coming in on the other parts of the triangle. But when we look at angles, even if I give you an angle that's not a whole number, I want you to spit back an angle to me to the nearest whole degree. After we know that internal angle, we then need to add or subtract to one of our compass points to tell me what my bearing angle was. That's all you got to do. That will make me happy. 
So please work together in small groups. Make sure that you understand everything and get all this done. Hopefully I will be back to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.